Hey everyone, this is Ben with RegisteredNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to talk about veterinarians and I'm going to give you the job overview, the education requirements, some of the likes and the dislikes of this profession, and detailed salary statistics so you can know exactly how much money these individuals make on average. So let's get started. All right, so what exactly does a veterinarian do on a daily basis? Well, most of us have an idea if we've ever had a pet, but these individuals care for animals by diagnosing, treating, and researching diseases. And of course, they will also provide advice to farmers and pet owners on how they should provide care and nutrition and things like that for their animals. Uh, some of the specific duties is that they will examine animals and diagnose issues. They will treat and dress wounds. They will perform surgery, administer vaccines, operate medical equipment such as x-rays. They will also prescribe medications and of course euthanize the animals or put them to sleep as people often say. Now the interesting thing is that there are a lot of different specialties for veterinarians. For example, some veterinarians will specialize with horses and only work with horses. Some will work with farmers and individuals like that. So there are a lot of different specialties. Okay, what are some of the education requirements to become a veterinarian? First of all, you generally have to have a bachelor's degree and there may be some exceptions where you can get into veterinarian school without one, but usually it's a pretty good idea to go ahead and get one. There usually is not a pre-vet program in a lot of colleges, so a good strategy is to try to major in something that incorporates a lot of sciences like the biologies and the chemistries because those will help you tremendously when it comes time to actually get into veterinarian school. Um, it is very competitive by the way they do turn down uh, usually at least half of all applicants, so it can be very difficult to get into veterinary school. It does require another four years once you are actually in, though, and you will get a doctorate, and of course you will be a doctor. So it takes four years for that, and usually that is classroom time, lab work, and then usually the fourth year you have a lot more clinical time. So that's usually what you have to do. And then after that, you will have to pass an exam so that you can become licensed to practice in your state. Now, you can also go further and get certifications to, you know, or choose a specialty, like I said before. And when you go that route, usually you will have to have some actual uh, number of years of experience. And then you can sit and apply for certifications and take exams and so forth. Now, if you want to get into veterinarian school and become a veterinarian, a couple of suggestions I can give you is that number one, you want to get your foot in the door by trying to work at a veterinarian place. So for example, try to get a job as a kennel worker or receptionist or even a janitor. Just try to get your foot in the door working part time in some way. Next, you want to try to be thinking about letters of recommendation and reference because it's very competitive, like I said before, so you want to try to stand out by getting a really good recommendation from a licensed veterinarian. And then finally, like I said, you want to take a lot of those sciences in college. You can always get a fallback degree. Um, according to cornell.edu, it's really not that big of a deal what you get your undergraduate degree in. So let's say you want to major in business or maybe biology or chemistry or something like that. But the key thing is take a lot of science courses because that will look a little better and it will help prepare you. So what are some of the likes and the dislikes of working as a veterinarian? Well, one of the things is that individuals who go into this profession almost always have an extreme passion for helping animals and helping people with their pets. They really love what they do. They're very passionate about that. Another thing that individuals like is that you have the option of opening your own practice at some point, giving you a little more freedom and flexibility. Another perk is that you can specialize in so many different areas. So you can learn to, for example, work with just horses or, or go into a different specialty. What are some of the dislikes? Well, first of all, there's always the danger of dealing with animals because some may be aggressive, um, some may have some sort of disease, so you always expose yourself to that danger. Another thing is that people can become very emotional and distraught. I've even heard stories of people bringing in an animal that's already actually, it's already dead, and they're like, help my animal. And the veterinarian will just be like, I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do. Your animal has passed away. And so people can become very upset. Another thing they have to deal with is financial issues. People won't pay their bills sometimes, and that can be very frustrating. And of course, they will witness signs of animal neglect with nutrition or maybe abuse and things like that. So now let's talk about the job outlook and some salary information. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, which is where I got all of these salary figures I'm getting ready to talk to you about, 
As of 2014, they projected a 9% growth rate for the profession of veterinarians between years 2014 to 2024. That's about a little bit faster than average, so it is going to grow throughout time. There were 62,470 veterinarians employed in the United States, according to their statistics. Now, the average salary for a veterinarian in the U.S., $98,230, and that's across the whole entire U.S. $47.23 was the average hourly wage. Now, let's talk about some of the factors that can cause your salary to vary. For example, the state in which you live, the industry in which you work can all impact your salary. Well, first of all, the industries with the highest level of employment, number one, professional, scientific, and technical services came in at $98,750. The federal government, number two, the average salary there, $89,950. And then number three were colleges and universities, $80,170 was the average salary there. Now, what about the top paying industries for veterinarians? Well, management companies, believe it or not, Number one, $139,230 there. Scientific research and development was number two at $124,890. And then employment services came in at number three with $121,570. What about the states? What were the top paying states for veterinarians? Well, Delaware came in at number one. The average salary there, $128,740. New Jersey, number two, $120,240 was the average there. Connecticut came in at number three, $119,670 was the average there. What about the lowest paying states? Well, Montana, was number one, $65,350 was the average there. Kansas, number two, $73,790. And then Alabama, number three, $68,440 was the average there. And I will have an article link in the description of the YouTube video below if you're watching this on YouTube. And you can click that link and go to an article on our website. We will have salary statistics for all 50 states if you'd like to know more. So that's a little bit about veterinarians. This is a continuation of a series I've been doing on healthcare salaries. You can check out that playlist if you want to know about nurses and a lot of different healthcare positions. Thank you so much for watching and please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel.